It's always challenging when you're thinking of relocating somewhere and then you got to figure out what areas to choose from and for what reasons and you have no line of sight and you're hearing everything from on YouTube and the news, everything about certain areas and it still just actually boggles your mind and it just, ah, you get so frustrated. I'm with you. And if you're anything like a lot of my clients, uh, you're not alone. So in this video, I'm going to try to ease some of that stress and break down a little bit of how you can best choose areas to live in Tampa. So let's get started. Well, hey gang, I'm Emily. I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Florida and I live in the Tampa St. Pete area. And this channel is dedicated to all things living, working, playing, sleeping, eating, and especially this crazy real estate market we are in in Central Florida. So if that resonates with you, if you don't mind, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That really helps me out a lot. And don't forget, you can leave me a comment below, ask me a question give me some advice. Uh, I, I'm open to anything. I love hearing from everybody. And if you are looking to relocate to the Tampa area, Tampa St. Pete area, I can't help you if you don't reach out to me. I love hearing from people every day and getting on calls and discussing everybody's plans. And I'd like to do the same thing for you. So don't be afraid to hit me up. My, my links are below and you can contact me and we can start talking about your relocation needs. All righty. So today I thought I would take a look at a map with you and talk about how how is it possible to choose areas when you're thinking about relocating when you live far away and you really don't understand the areas and it's really just a mixed bag when it comes to figuring out this area so what i'd like to do is walk you through some areas of tampa and kind of give you a line of sight as to why i think they're good why i think they either need to be on your list or you need to be wary of them and give you kind of a breakdown based on traffic, you know, commuter time, activities, things you want to do with your kids, that sort of thing, and give you a very wide view of Tampa. Tampa is not just this small little town. It has grown immensely all over. So when I talk about selling real estate, I talk about selling real estate basically in central Florida because Tampa has now expanded itself almost beyond its own borders. So um, let's just take a look at a map together and let me kind of get started on this. So I'm going to share my screen. So as you see Tampa, that's downtown Tampa right there and the Hillsborough River running right through it and heading down into Hillsborough Bay. And there's a lot of fun things to do here. I also wanted to point out Davis Island. And this is also, Har well, actually this is Harbor Island. Sorry guys, that's Harbor Island. The Channel District area has a lot of new high rises going in in the Water Street District. And they have food trucks and all sorts of fun things. I think it's a first Thursday or a last Thursday. Anyway, there's always something fun going on down there. This is also in an area that becomes a little bit more, what I'd like to say, urban, okay? So it bleeds into Ybor City and as you go up into East Tampa. So let me scroll out a little bit and explain to you this area very briefly because I want to get to some other areas. This area is again going to be your very old kind of dirtier homes, not going to lie. They're older. They need renovation. They, uh, they've been flipping them especially in Seminole Heights, that area became really popular. A lot of the homes butt up against the river. So you've got waterfront property right there. And this area became super, super hot and trendy a couple of years ago, and it's just continued to be hot and trendy. Interesting little eclectic eateries, revolution ice cream which has different you know wild flavors of ice cream and you're going to have some of our best restaurants i would say right here in south seminole heights into seminole heights so south seminole heights seminole heights and wellswood and riverside heights this whole area is a really nice sort of blend of neighborhoods as well as that urban feel those you know uh, mid-century homes you even have a little bit of old tampa feel with some of the brick lane streets and that sort of thing but it is not for people looking for the suburbs this is like anti-suburbs area okay but they've got cool stuff lots of great restaurants and uh, bars and interesting ice cream shops and that sort of thing but you are in the middle of a very urban area 
the more east of 275 you go, the more urban you get, okay? Let me just say it that way. So when you're looking at the channel side area, you have to think about, you know, if you're the type of person that needs a target nearby, you know, that's not gonna, this area is not gonna be for you. This is cute little restaurants, cute little shops, you know, small, mom and pop, local, locally owned. But you do have the coolness of Ybor City where you've got one of the best and oldest restaurants in town called the Colombian. And you've got great Italian restaurants and you've got Gaspar's Grotto and all those sorts of things. But that's gonna be for your nightlife. Lots of nightlife in Ybor City, okay? So when you're looking at the map of Tampa and you're thinking, wow, downtown Tampa looks like it's really, really cool. It is not like St. Pete. St. Pete downtown has a very different feel than the downtown Tampa area, okay? But there's so much to do. So if that's something that you really need and you need to have walkability and you wanna be able to walk to the coffee shop and you wanna be able to walk everywhere or ride a bike, that sort of thing, downtown, if I can say it, downtown Tampa and Harbor Island are gonna be that for you. Also, you've got tremendous waterfront views. So if you're in downtown Tampa and you're in a high rise, you've got some of the best views in town. One of the, you, you've probably seen them, you know, on other YouTube videos in, my, in mine as well. UT has beautiful landscape and beautiful lighting at night and um, our downtown buildings are beautifully lit. So it is beautiful. Again, the more east you go, a little bit rougher the neighborhood but you're still close to this area that I really love, which is Armature Works, which is again, an area where you can you can access it from the river and have all these restaurants and waterworks and um, just lots of fun stuff to do, okay? So let's move on a little bit from that. Let's head over to the South Tampa area. South Tampa is a very hot area and coveted area that people wanna live in. It's, it's I call it the Bel Air of Ta Tampa. The homes are beautiful, country clubs, Look, look at South Tampa, it's surrounded by water. So, so you know, it's posh, 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 posh. Lots of marinas and lots of boating and lots of money. And it's got one of our most popular high school districts too, which is Plant High School. And so most people wanna live above, and this is the Gandhi Bridge, just for, for reference, this is the Gandhi Bridge. And I'm don't hold me to this, but I think the school district starts above the Gandhi. So you have to double check for yourself um on niche.com south tampa really started to boom especially in the hyde park area when i was a kid we used to have you know maybe one restaurant in hyde park and we would venture down there because it was a little bit nicer of an area and obviously you're down by bayshore which bayshore boulevard has a lot of homes all along here multiple million dollars as you can assume and this is also a biking and running trail and it goes all the way down, I think, to the base. So that's also something, again, for people who are big into outdoors, they want that sort of lifestyle. So South Tampa is gonna run you anywhere from, I believe, uh, the latest that I looked at, six, seven, eight hundred thousand and way up. And we're talking about no backyard. My boyfriend and I were driving through South Tampa, I think it was uh, on Saturday, and literally is there was this beautiful new home going up and we drove past it and looked in the backyard and he was like no backyard so it depends on what what you want if you want a backyard it's not going to be in south tampa unless you get lucky and you get a big lot but that's just the purple squirrel all right so now we've been focusing on central tampa and some surrounding areas the ebor city the seminole heights and the south tampa area there are two ways to go with this. You can go to the east side of town or you can go to the west side of town, but you can also go north. So I'm gonna start with the east side of town and give you a rough overview. And then we're gonna head north and then we're gonna head west and then we're gonna end south. So let's go counterclockwise on my map here. And let me show you what I'm talking about. As we're looking at the map on the east side of town, basically when I say the east side of town, I mean east side of downtown Tampa, okay? We have the Selman Expressway that was built uh, several years ago, but it was, it's not, you know, it wasn't here when I lived here back in the 80s and 90s. And it was the access to the Brandon area to get to people that work downtown, right? Makes sense. So Brandon really started to blow up with new construction, HOA communities, where it was notoriously, um, you know, all agriculture back in the day. So when I was growing up, we never even went east of 275. There was nothing there. It was all land or marsh or, you know, cow country, basically. So as 
everything expanded, so did the town. So Brandon and Riverview, if I can scroll in to pick up Riverview, Riverview and Brandon became the next sort of hot neighborhoods. Again, new construction. Those homes now, some of those new construction properties that were coming up back in the day, those are now 20 year old homes. There are now a few other new communities going up. And um, so there are some new constructions that are more dated. If that, if you like the planned communities, if you like communities where you know, they've got their own community pool and community features like that and the jungle gyms and they have schools kind of connected to them. If that is something that you're looking looking to do or that you would like for your family, I think Riverview and Brandon can provide that for you. But also what's really cool is because again, those areas started to blow up. This little area started blowing up and Bloomingdale, I really kind of wanted to talk about Fishhawk. So let me go over here. Bloomingdale is a nice little area, but I really want to talk about Fishhawk. Fishhawk is another really, really beautiful community. What I mean, really, truly, it's kind of like a, a beautiful uh, little suburb that got plopped right in the middle of an agricultural town. So you're going to drive for miles and not see anything. And then all of a sudden you're going to see, oh, there's the Publix and, you know, there's the Target and there's a thing. And then, oh, look at this beautiful community and people people riding their bicycles along the street, you know, very clean, very like, you know, uh, storybook kind of neighborhood. And I've been hearing that this is a good school district in this area as well. And I'm going to run through this a little quickly because I have, I'm going to do a broad stroke and please feel free to comment below and ask me questions. If there's some areas you want me to dive a little deeper in with you, I'd be happy to do that. I can also help you if you're looking to relocate, as I've mentioned before, so don't hesitate to reach out. Another area that started to grow up, you know, grow and kind of expand as the Riverview and Brandon area started to grow and expand is this Apollo Beach area. Now, people think there's a beach in Apollo Beach. There's not really a beach. There is a small one right here. I can't really speak to that being a real beach. I've never been to it. I've been along this area right here. Um, along here, there's a lot of waterfront homes in here. It was a lot of retirees back in the day. It's now shifting again as Tampa's, you know, growing on everybody's mind as far as relocation. So it is a fun little area. They've got a lot of shopping and some restaurants. It's not huge. It's, it's again, like a community that got plopped in the middle of a big agricultural area. Same thing. So you're going to see on our map neighborhoods and technically they are just plopped in here, let's make a community, let's plop over here and let's make a community if that makes sense. Okay, and south of Apollo Beach is Ruskin. Ruskin, in my opinion, just started to become, you know, an area that everybody's interested in. And I'll tell you why, planned communities, those new construction homes and the affordability. The homes down here, they have been staying a little bit more level than some of our other new construction properties throughout Tampa and St. Pete as well. If you don't really care about being in Tampa proper or even anywhere near it, because you're gonna be a good 45 minutes to an hour from central Tampa if you live in Ruskin. So Ruskin becomes your neighborhood of choice. They do have a lot to offer. And then you can go up to Apollo Beach and then you can even go south which I'm going to take you a little bit south. You have the Little Manatee River down here, and it obviously feeds into the bay. So you have a lot of marinas and boating people, boating communities throughout that as you keep going south, hitting Ruskin. But again, that's going to again be for your new construction homes, your more up-to-date new construction homes. And I just want to take you a little bit south so I can show you. There's Ruskin. We're going to come down here. Here's Sun City. We just crossed the Little Manatee River. And now we're over down here into Palmetto. Palmetto, Ellington, all of these little neighborhoods are starting to kind of pop up on people's radar as well, because again, you're near all of this water, right? So if you're if water is what you're looking for, I highly recommend you checking out. If you're not married to Tampa proper, I would check out the Ruskin area. Sun City is um, still pretty much a retirement community, I'm not gonna lie. Parish is also another area that is got, you know, again, those planned communities. Um, again, you're gonna, oh, you're gonna drive, it's gonna be cows, and then it's gonna be a community. <laughs> so if that appeals to you, I think that's something you need to consider. But because 75, Interstate 75 runs north and south, you are gonna have a little bit more of the popular shops and that sort of thing. You're probably not gonna find the unique restaurants 
just, you're gonna have more of your chain restaurants. So if that's for you, great. Um, you, you're not gonna worry too much about flood zones over on the other side of 75, but you do need to take a look if you're on the west side of 75, what the flood plain is and that sort of thing. Most of the new construction homes, just so you know, they are built um, at a higher elevation with a little bit of a pitch. That's in order to keep you, you know, pretty safe if there was a flood. So the newer homes took that into consideration. Okay, so we pretty much covered the southeast side of Tampa. So let's go north. Like I mentioned, we're gonna go a little clockwork here, uh, clockwise, I mean. I'm not gonna talk too much about Velrico, Sefner, and Temple Terrace, or Thinona Sassa, because honestly, I don't really sell much in there. And I'm not in that area a lot. I know it's also not really a favorable area for most of my clients. And when I ask people to go drive that area, they tend to go, eh. so you choose for yourself, but that's what, we're not gonna focus on that right now. So we're gonna keep heading up uh, 75, where 275 and 75 meet up in Wesley Chapel. We're gonna talk about Wesley Chapel, Land of Lakes, Lutes, and Odessa. This area right in here, again, was agriculture. Back when I was in school, we used to go mudding in this area. Yes, I did that. I did that once. Lutes, I would say, is probably going to be your most Southern neighborhood uh, that doesn't feel like it's too outside of town. Lutes sits uh, just above Greater Northdale. And I actually grew up in Carrollwood in Lake Magdalene. This was the neighborhood back in the 80s, okay? Citrus Park, this little quadrant. And as obviously we grew and expanded, people went north, they went into Cheval. Cheval is an area as well as a community. There's a community called Cheval, which again, we're talking the massive, massive homes, multiple million dollar homes, beautiful, gated, plush, everything. Well, you know, I, I, could, I could go on and on and on, but it's really stunning and, and it's worth driving by. But they also have communities surrounding the Cheval community with very nice, beautiful, affordable homes. It's definitely something to consider. I've sent clients there all the time. Lutz is right next door to it. Lutz, because of all these lakes, you know, it's all these like baby lakes and ponds, it creates more of a marshy feel feel sort of like uh you know it's just a little bit more nature so again the east side of town focuses more on nature and the west side of town obviously focuses on beaches makes sense but you have to take that in consideration when you're trying to figure out your lifestyle and the things that you like to do with your family so lutes has beautiful lakes so you can have a boat you can ski on most of these little lakes and ponds as long as they're deep enough and uh jet skis i see people out you know doing jet skiing all the time on these little lakes and it is going to be a lot, a lot more bugs and a little bit more humid. I will, I will say that, uh, but it's still a lovely area. I actually will drive from my house up to the north part of Lutz for some shopping. There's a, some, there are some specific things I like to do or shop for or places I like to eat that are just up in that area. So I'll travel to it. Land of Lakes. To me, Land of Lakes is basically an extension of Lutz. Same vibe. You've got again. Back in the day, the planned communities, those homes are now gonna be 20 plus maybe years old, 15 to 20 years old. Uh, there is a little bit of new construction. There's a smattering of new construction throughout Lutes and Land Lakes. but truthfully, and we're gonna head west in a minute and I'll tell you, but most likely you're gonna find Northern communities are gonna be, the, the newer communities are gonna be heading Northwest. So let's head east for one last little moment, and I'm gonna talk about Wesley Chapel. So Wesley Chapel was a part of Zephyr Hills for a long, long time, and there are still some Wesley Chapel addresses that still say Zephyr Hills for the postal code. This has become, in my opinion, the new Tampa area. There is actually an area called New Tampa, but it's teeny tiny. I really feel like Wesley Chapel is the Tampa of Wesley Chapel. Wesley Chapel, if I can say that all together. It has a ton to offer. It's spread out, so you don't feel like you're on top of each other. It's got a lot of nature, nature trails, um, lots of trees, very, very green grass. It's, it's pretty beautiful. And you've got a variety of shopping options. You have um, Wiregrass Mall, which is an outdoor mall, it has tons of great uh, restaurants in it with, again, your normal kind of shopping. It, we also have uh, the outlet malls up there. 
And it, within the outlet malls, they have some really cool restaurants as well. And you've got some of these um, communities that also have the community features like a community pool and playgrounds and tennis courts and basketball courts and that sort of thing. So you can, a lot of people I know um, that were relocating uh, that have helped, we've, we've done the Wesley Chapel that has been on our list. Now it's becoming again, extremely popular and those prices are going up. So just, you have to think about your budget but as far as schools community feel suburban life with you know fun all around you and you don't have to go into tampa if you don't want to i think wesley chapel is a really good option for you so let's focus as i mentioned heading to the west and as we stay north a bit let's talk about these areas that are just west of cheval and lutes and land of lakes Odessa. I love Odessa. Odessa, Keystone, and even Lake Fern. This area is basically, it's going to feel a little bit the same as Land of Lakes and Lutes as well as Cheval. It's just an extension of all of that land, land, ponds, and lakes and uh, community feel, neighborhoods. You just don't have the same kind of shopping that you have over in Wesley Chapel. You have some, but it's not the big box stores, I think you have to travel a little bit to get to those. But you also have these wonderful lakes. I've been showing homes on Lake Keystone. And, you know, again, if you're a lot of people from up north are used to lake life. And so it's a little bit of an easier transition to a lake than an ocean. An ocean scares a lot of or ocean. I'm sorry, gulf. I always say ocean and I mean the gulf. The gulf is it can be scary for some people because of flood zone. Now you still have to worry about flooding when it comes to lakes and ponds as well. I was looking at a property, a lakefront property with a client of mine. And immediately we noticed the garage level, the asphalt, was up a little higher and then the garage went like that. Oh, that's a no-no as that's logical to most people that own a home and understand flooding. You want it to be the opposite. You want the asphalt to go away from your garage. So the houses need to be lifted up a little bit. So some of these older homes that you're gonna find in the Odessa, Keystone and Lake Fern area, you're gonna find they might be a little bit more settled in. You can get a, still a really great house, you just may have to you know, redo the foundation, something to think about. So again, you kinda wanna watch your elevation in these waterfront property areas. Interestingly enough, I'm not even signed into my Google Maps here and it's it really wants to show you all of these areas to golf. So where there's green grass, there is golf in Florida. So if golfing is your thing, you've, you've got plenty of options all around. I mean, in general, you're gonna have lots of options, but also if you like to hike and bike, you're not gonna hike mountains in Florida, that's a given, but we do have hiking trails that are basically biking trails and they can go for miles and miles and miles. And as we scroll out and continue west, as we go west from Keystone, Lake Fern, and Odessa, there's a new area that popped up called Trinity. Again, it's an extension of this land. And you go into Holiday and Tarpon Springs, all this over here. And Cloak, again, is kind of an extension of Tarpon Springs. To be honest with you, I haven't really sold past Holiday. So this area right in here is, again, for people that want to be closer to the beach, you are just probably 10 to 15 minutes from the beach being over right here on 19. So US 19 obviously runs north and south and the closer it gets to the water, obviously the closer those the properties and the higher the properties are and the, the riskier floodplain you're in. So take that into consideration. And when you're looking at homes with your agent or with me, we always talk about flood zones. That's one of the first things I look at. I make sure the home is in your budget. And then I say, is it in a flood zone? Because then we have to start talking about insurance uh, and do all of the things that we need to do according to that. So for all of you Fisher people out there, I'm sure Lake Tarpon has been on your list. It is a wonderful lake. It's big, you can boat on it, and it's just right smack dab in the middle um, of Palm Harbor and East Lake. 
And those are also some great communities that I've talked about on other videos, which I'll probably, you know, connect over here. I, I personally love this area, but I I'm biased. My father has lived in Palm Harbor since I was a teenager, and uh, I know the area very well. I've watched it grow and expand. And honestly, he doesn't really leave a 10 mile radius of his house. He has everything he needs. So I, I wanna speak to, uh, to Palm Harbor a little bit more because uh, it was becoming all of, all of us children of the 80s and our parents were getting older and they were retiring in Palm Harbor. So it, it's just not like that anymore. I, I say that about every area and it sounds redundant, but it really is the truth. I will tell you if I think an area is specifically retirees, but that isn't the norm anymore. So, so many areas are, um, are just transitioning because people like what the neighborhood has to offer and they're moving in with their families and it's changing. So that's a good thing. So when people are considering Palm Harbor, one of the major benefits of living in that area is that you can live inland and have maybe a lake or a pond view as well as having all this wonderful shopping along US 19 and great restaurants, but you are so close to the Gulf. You are just right there. So it is a really great option for people that are that want to be more beachy people or people like my parents who they love the beach, but they don't go to the beach all the time, but they like being close to the beach because there is a vibe that comes with being close to the beach. And that suits them more than the vibe of the nature and uh, rural areas that are more on the east side of Tampa. So that's why you have to really figure out what kind of person are you? And when I talk to my clients and if I talk to you, that's something that I talk to you a lot about. Like, what do you guys do on the weekends and where do you spend your time? And then I try to guide you to the areas that are gonna be conducive to that. Obviously right south of, of Palm Harbor, between Palm Harbor and Dunedin, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, is one of my favorite beaches, which is Honeymoon Island. And yes, it is an island. And there is a causeway right here that connects it. That's the Dunedin Causeway. And then back in the day, we had a hurricane that created this island called Caladesi Island. It looks like it connects. It only connects during high tide. Sorry, low tide. It connects during low tide. When it's high tide, you're gonna do a lot of swimming if you wanna connect Caladesi Island to Clearwater. <laughs> so I don't recommend doing that. I would just take the ferry, which you can take from Honeymoon Island for $25. You can go over to Caladesi and it's, I mean, look at that. It's a beautiful island, beach feel. You can even take your own boat and park it in the marina and have a day on the water. So it's really one of my favorite places. Let's talk about Dunedin. Let's get to that. Dunedin, gosh, it's a hidden gem. It's something, it's, it's, it's a neighborhood that when I came back, I really spent uh, a lot of time with my friends hanging out. And I was like, we did we ever know about this place? <laughs> you know, it's got an old downtown. It has a main street that dead ends at the water. There's a marina. There's two really great restaurants there. One is Old Bay. I they don't I think they don't do oysters anymore, but they that was my place to go get oysters. They have amazing grouper sandwiches. There's tons of wonderful shopping. I was just telling a woman that I met at the beach yesterday about Dunedin. She's here for two months checking out the area. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of help her figure out some areas she's thinking of relocating to. And I was like, you might want to check out Dunedin because there's a lot of reasons. So let's let's look at that. You're close to the Dunedin Causeway, which leads to the Honeymoon Island State Park Great Beach. There's the Pinellas Trail that runs 45 miles north and south. So if biking is your thing and you want to bike places, it's right there. Dunedin also has a ton of shopping. There's the Countryside Mall. And you're again right here at US 19 where there's a ton of shopping and a ton of restaurants. And it's just a very robust um, suburb that's got a lot to offer and it's been growing and expanding over the years. So you've, you really don't lack many things in that area. It's also an area when you go into it and you live there, you probably won't need to leave it. Everything you need is really right there. And Dunedin is a very large area. So pretty much from this street, which is Curly Road. So as you go south, you end up down here at the Dunedin Market. There is a marina down here, there's Edgewater Park, and you can take this road, Main Street, all the way up. And there's tons to do. There's, you know, talk about breweries. We do a lot of brew hopping. If you follow my channel, you'll know that me and my friends and my boyfriend, we love to, to brew hop. So 
tons and tons to do. It's beautiful, it's waterfront, and these little homes, I say little, they're not cheap, but they do have some bungalows, you know, sprinkled in, but the homes are just beautiful down there. So again, Dunedin is a really on my list, especially if you are somebody that likes the beach feel, but you need a little suburban life. Dunedin as well as Palm Harbor. Palm Harbor, I would say feels a little bit older than Dunedin, but not bad. It's just different. Palm Harbor is pretty wide. So if we scroll out a bit, you know, there's there's so many more communities I'd love to talk to you about, but I'm just gonna briefly go over them. If you just go east of Dunedin, you'll see Safety Harbor, and then there's a little bridge here, and that's Oldsmar, and there's this wonderful Philippi Park. Oh, there's so much great fishing in here and uh, water sports, and I've kayaked in, in all of this area, I've boated in this area. This is this is my neighborhood. So Again, Dunedin, um, east, going into Oldsmar. This is Tampa Road right here. And this is the upper Tampa Bay Park. Again, lots of parks. And you'll see Oldsmar, West Chase, Town and Country. I live in, technically in Town and Country. We used to call it Town and Compton back in the day. <laughs> it used to be a little rough neighborhood and it's, it's slowly moving in a better direction. I live in a canal community back here. So these houses, I'm in a condo, but these houses back here are in the multiple millions. They're beautiful. And then Tampa Shores is over here and it's another great uh, canal community. Anything along here truly is a wonderful canal community. This is the Courtney Campbell Causeway. That's Mobley Bay. By the way, this bay is super, super shallow. You would think it would be a lot deeper, but it's not. And then of course there's Safety Harbor. So I love this corridor right here. Obviously I live here. It's it's where I spend a majority of my time as well as Dunedin. You really can't go wrong. They all have a little bit of the same feel. I would say Oldsmar has a little bit more of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, agricultural feel because it used to be farmland, but it has turned over significantly. Great shopping, by the way. Great restaurants. Um, it's a little hit or miss as you get closer to, to my neighborhood. There's not as many restaurant opportunities. We tend to go into Oldsmar and a little bit more west when we're looking for restaurant options. Now, as far as school districts, um, you're going to have to look at niche.com or uh, other websites for school districts. As far as safety, I can just tell you, you know, I live lived in LA for, you know, two centuries practically, and uh, not centuries, excuse me. I lived in LA for almost 20 years and uh, safety was always on my mind. I don't really think about it too much here, even though maybe I should, but I, I don't ever feel unsafe. I'm gonna, there are parts of Tampa I, I feel unsafe in, but not in this community, not at all. West Chase, people love this little, little area. It's, it, I think Wesley Chapel was trying to be West Chase, and I think they succeeded to a certain extent. West Chase is just very small, and there's lots of these little ponds. By the way, if you want to see a gator in your community, you will see them in West Chase because there's lots of nature preserves. There's also great restaurants and uh, lots of um, businesses in here. and. Um, I, I can tell you more about West Chase. There's great schools as well. And I think that's what brings a lot of families to this area. And then you're on, this is Sheldon Road right here, which has a lot of good shopping. And I also think being in this area and I can speak to it because it's my neighborhood, you're very close to the airport. So that's another thing. If you're someone that has to travel for work, getting to and from, you wanna be close to Tampa. I'm at Tampa International Airport. So I've talked in a couple of my videos about the three bridges that connect to St. Pete. So we're gonna start talking about the Clearwater St. Pete area now. This is the Courtney Campbell Causeway, which is the 60, and then you've got 275, which is the Howard Franklin Bridge, and that connects you to downtown Tampa. And then there's the Gandhi, which is the last major interstate in South Tampa and it can take you into St. Pete as well. Oldsmar Safety Harbor, as we talked about, you know, you're right here in old Tampa Bay. And then you could loop back around and you would be over here at Davis Island and Harbor Island and Channel Side. But we're gonna go back west and talk now about Clearwater and all of the surrounding areas leading down to St. Pete. Clearwater, let's let's talk about the West Side Town because it's it can get confusing for people. Again, the, the lovely lady that I was talking to while we were floating in the ocean yesterday, she's staying in Largo. 
Largo, she was like, Largo, uh, and that's true. Largo is, eh. It was a ton of trailer parks back in the day and there's still some good ones. Uh, well, there's some good ones and there's some not so pretty ones. And they, that's sort of that area's niche. It's turning over. They're getting a whole new downtown. They're getting some, you know, workspace, uh, live workspaces and that sort of thing. Very cute little boutiques are going in. So I'm starting to see the shift and I think it has a lot to do with Clearwater. So let's talk about that. Clearwater, I think it's the, still the number one beach in America. That's not the beach the locals go to, FYI. We'll talk about that. I've talked about it in some other videos. It gets super crowded, but you've got access to some awesome beaches south of it as well, which we'll talk about. But there are homes all in here. This is called the Intercoastal. This is the Intercoastal, and there's some wonderful homes in here. And you would think, oh gosh, I can't afford to live over there. 500,000 can get you a, probably a three bedroom. So, and you might actually have a canal or you might have you know a view right in, smack dab right here in the intercoastal but there are some you know and in, in, i say that in these little fingers right but if you're looking like right here waterfront wise yeah that's going to be in the multiple millions especially near the bel air country club so sand key sand key is another wonderful state beach it kind of wraps around over here is there's like this clear water island it's lots of boating it's lots and lots of activity it's it's a stunning beach it can it can tend to be a little dirtier because it's a park and people leave their trash unfortunately but it has a lot more space a lot more beach space clearwater beach also has that as well but it's crowded in clearwater beach you're going to pay a pretty penny to park and it's, sometimes you can't find any parking so my suggestion would be to go then to sand key if that's if you're looking for a good beach so my mother will kill me if I don't mention it. She watches my videos, so I have to do this for her. Bel Air, Bel Air Beach and Bel Air Shores. So right in here, this is one of those areas that if I could wiggle my nose and move there, I would move there. Why? I used to live there as a kid. Bel Air Beach, Bel Air Bluffs, Bel Air Shores. It's all Bel Air. I grew up here when I was like two, three. We lived right on the beach. The condo at the time, back in the, I would think that's the late seventies. I'm aging myself, I know. That condo that my parents were living in sold for $60,000. Right now, or I should say in 2020, the last one that sold in the condo that we were in, it sold for 650 and it was a two, two. And that's still pretty good in this market, I think, especially you have a private beach. Yes, I said private. It's stunning over here. I have another video where I talk a lot about Beller Beach and Clearwater. So check that out as well to kind of dive a little bit deeper into that Whispering Pines. Then, then it sort of, there becomes a division. Indian Rocks Beach, it's, that's all going to be touristy. Indian Rocks, Indian Shores, uh, Reddington, Reddington Beach, Madeira Beach. All of this beach community right in here, all the way down to St. Pete Beach, is gonna be a mix between vacationers and residential people. If you don't mind rubbing elbows with out-of-state folks and vacationers, I suggest checking it out because there you can get beautiful homes all along here and especially in this intercoastal area right in here, right? Bay Pines is another wonderful community. Um, South Pasadena is a wonderful community. Gulfport, Gulfport can be a little bit more on the retiree side, but if you're over 40, don't worry, you're not alone. There are people in their 40s and 50s in Gulfport. It's beautiful and they've got their own beach and their own marina and their own little downtown. So many options. And then as you loop back around, you've got St. Pete. And we've talked about St. Pete a lot. And I try to tell people the best thing to consider with St. Pete is to stay on the east side of 275, right here, okay? Right along here. This is wonderful land, wonderful homes, wonderful communities. You've got a little bit of everything. Whedon Island is a wonderful, it's shallow, by the way, wonderful place to kayak and see manatees. And there's a lot of wonderful places here to eat and dock your boat. It's kind of like pull your boat up, dock it, and go get yourself a cocktail kind of environment. And down here, this is Venetian Isles and Snell Isle, all of this. Again, wonderful views, wonderful, wonderful views, beautiful homes. And you've got this fourth street, which is gonna have all of your major shopping on it, okay? You see North Kenwood, 
that breaks a little bit of my rule, right? It's on the east side of 275. It's still a great area, but it just doesn't have that curb appeal. So if you don't care about curb appeal and you still want to be in St. Pete and you want to kind of get a cool eclectic home, I think Kenwood is a place to consider. I can't speak to the school districts in St. Pete. Again, you have to go to niche.com. But if you're looking for activities, nightlife, uh, fishing, boating, uh, walking trails, that sort of thing. St. Pete has that in spades. It's just a totally different vibe, like I mentioned, than downtown Tampa. You can go hang out in downtown St. Pete and you don't have to spend a dime, or you can eat at some of the best restaurants you've ever had and gone to some of the coolest museums you've ever seen and bought some really expensive jewelry all along this area, if you like. So there is something for everybody. And then of course you've got the Vinoy Park and there's a lot of biking, a lot of little baby beaches, and you've got the new St. Pete Pier that just kind of popped up about two years ago. And it was a beautiful addition to the downtown St. Pete feel. You can go to a Rays game, which I did the other night, go to a Rays game. And then what we did was we plopped ourselves over here somewhere on Central Ave. I think this is Central, yep, Central Ave. And we went to a bar and we watched one of the last lightning games after we watched a race game. It was really fun. So there's a ton to do in St. Pete. I've got videos about St. Pete or ask me questions below about St. Pete. It's gonna be hit or miss. It's gonna be kind of a, as you go, when, when you're looking at the MLS and you're looking at homes in St. Pete, you're gonna to have to look at a map and you're gonna to have to talk to somebody because one side of the street could be great. The other side of the street could not be so great. So you gotta to, got to watch for that. And it can be a little dirty, I'm not gonna lie. There are obviously way more neighborhoods down here that I could talk about. I'm gonna start trying to dive a little bit more deeper into some videos to talk to you guys about this, but I'm hitting the highlights of the, of the areas I think you should think about. I also, like I said, didn't even really go into Stitches Park and Greater Northdale, as well as of Lake Magdalene and that sort of thing, but those are also areas to consider. So the best thing to do is to reach out to me and let's get a conversation going, especially if there are some neighborhoods that, you know, are questionable or that you have questions about. So hit me up. My links are below. I would love to help you. I've been helping a lot of people on YouTube and it's really kind of this new world we're in and it's really fun and exciting. And it's really great to meet all of you in all of your different cities and hear your stories. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And as always, if you like this content, it really helps me out if you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop new videos. And I know this video was really dense, so I hope that you'll come back to it and take a look at it. And please ask me questions. Like I've said, I, I, there's a lot to cover. We didn't even really get to the whole traffic and commuting, but as you can see from the map, the further away you go, the, the longer that traffic is, because let me tell you, people are moving here and traffic is becoming atrocious. So you've got to think about that. But again, I'm here to answer any questions you have and to help you along the way. And I just look forward to speaking to all of you and seeing you again in my next video. So have a good one, everybody. I really appreciate you stopping by. Bye-bye.